Hi, I'm Adrian Thomas, Wildlife Gardener at the RSPB. We set some homeowners the challenge of what they could do in their outside space to make it better for them and for wildlife. They had a budget of just £250 and a little bit of help from me. Today I'm in Chris and Emily's garden in Cambridgeshire. When they moved in about nine months ago, the garden was pretty much a bed of paving and concrete. So this really is a project about returning this garden to nature. The first job was to get the concrete broken up and removed out of the garden. And then you've pretty much got a blank canvas. The middle of the garden is going to become a lawn for Nero the dog, and there's going to be a new vegetable patch but today's task is about putting in a woodland border and planting a fruit tree and putting in some climbing plants. Hi. Chris, Hi, Emily. Adrian. Come on in, we made a start without you. Brilliant, let's get on with it. So you're imagining Chris a, a, a kind of staggered path with, with gaps. I always think a bit of a wiggle it means you've got a journey to go on to the back <laughs> yeah. gate. This is fantastic, now the path is in because it describes the line of the borders so we'll see where the plants are gonna go and be able to put them in the right positions. Next step is just to improve this soil. A little bit of work to do before we start the planting. So I know that you guys wanted really quite a naturalistic garden full of native wildflowers. And what I've done is I've bought in plants as plug plants, really tiny, much smaller than you see them here. And they came in a little plug tray and I've planted them on into peat-free compost and recycled pots. And what it means is that you can have a really large selection of plants for really not a lot of money. Each of these is probably only cost one pound each. So it's a way of filling a big area as long as you're just patient for that growing year for them to come to, uh, to fruition. I think that part of Wildlife Friendly Gardening is sharing the love. So I have taken some plants out of my garden, which have self-seeded. Things like this pendulous sedge, a wonderful woodland plant, and teasel, which would be great for goldfinches. And this is a wonderful plant that I know you'll know, which is called hemp agrimony, which um, is a wonderful plant for, for pollinators. This is red campion, which I think is one of our most gorgeous native flowers. And when it flowers, you, you struggle to imagine that's not a garden flower. And then obviously shade, people often think of ferns. They're unusual, they're, they're not eaten by many creatures, but they've got a dense kind of cover element that beetles and things can, can hide away in. The key thing here is that little bit of patience to allow them to grow. I've also got some wildlife friendly shrubs to go in um, and people might think, well, those are really small, Adrian. That's gonna be insignificant in the border. But I always plant small because it allows them to get their feet down, get established, and then they grow away. So one of the key things that you guys said that you wanted was to cover your bare fences with, with climbers. You've already got a fabulous trackless spermum here and I'm getting the scent off that all the time. And then I've brought a range of stuff here. Some of them, like the ivies, will need to be in a, a shady position. So think if we have one ivy in this bed mm -hmm. and another ivy in the bed over there. Yeah. Because this, this one's a little bit bigger so we can put the honeysuckle over here maybe. We've got some for a sunny position, we've got a passion flower, we've got a clematis that likes its feet in the shade. I've even got you a hop, which is the food plant of the caterpillars of the comma butterfly, but maybe you'd like to make your own beer out of it. <laughs> so I know that you wanted a, a fruit tree, one that you could pick fruit from yourselves. So I've chosen you in peat free compost, a Cox's Orange Pippin, which I think is one of the best tasting apples that there is. 
and they're great for wildlife too because you've got all the foliage, you've got perching points for birds, you've got the blossom, and then you've got any fruit that you don't have, wildlife can have. You've got enough space for a fairly large tree here, not a huge orchard tree, but a fairly large one. And there is a critical thing in that most apple trees are grafted onto a separate rootstock. And that determines how large or small the apple tree is gonna grow. So I've got one here that will go up to about four meters, about 12 feet. So we're actually going to add a, a stake for extra support for the tree. So what we're gonna do is put the stake out of view behind the tree, and we're gonna put it in at 45 degrees so it doesn't go through the root ball. With a bee hotel for solitary bees, placement is absolutely everything. It needs to be facing between south and southeast, in a bright sunny position, and in a really stable place. With a bird box, we need it almost the exact opposite of the bee hotel. We need it facing between north and east, out of direct sunlight, and a little bit higher as well to get it away from ground predators. And the light apparently doesn't work. It doesn't work. Even better for the birds. So we set out today to do a little bit of a mini transformation, not the whole garden, because gardens aren't all done in one go. How do, how do you feel it's gone? Yeah, brilliant. It's so nice to finally have some green in the garden. It's going to be great. I can't wait to see it in a year or so when it's really established and it's grown up that much more. And I think that's the key really to what we've done here today. We've put in plug plants, we put in small plants, and in doing so it takes a bit longer for them to come through and really blossom and bloom. But it means we've been able to cover really quite a large area. And by next year, I think you'll really see the difference both for the garden and for wildlife. <laughs>